Hi listeners, welcome to the video lecture series on power electronics. In the previous video, we have solved problems on holding current and latching current. In this video, we are going to look into the various commutation methods of SER, that is, turn off methods of SER. Let us go into the lecture. In this video, initially we will be discussing about the term called as commutation and its types, and finally, we will look into forced commutation circuits of an SER. For further reading, you can follow this textbook in this page number. The contents of this presentation goes like this. Initially, we will be discussing about the term commutation and its types, and we will look into the various forced commutation methods used in SER. Let us go into the presentation. Let us understand what is the meaning of a commutation. Commutation is basically means transferring of current from one path to another. So in the case of SER, we know that SER can be turned on by applying the gate pulse. Once the SER has been turned on, which means that if the anode current goes more than the current called as latching current, gate loses its control. So during the turn on process, I apply the gate pulse. Once the anode current becomes more than the latching current, gate loses its control, means that I can remove the gate pulse. Removing the gate pulse does not mean that SER will be turned off. So, turn off process has nothing to do with the gate pulse. Gate pulse and turn off process do not have any relationship. So, to turn off the SER, some external circuitry is needed to turn off this SER. Such external circuitry is what you call it as the commutation circuit of an SER. Now, let us look into the conditions to be satisfied for successful commutation. So, first condition is the anode to cathode current of an SER must be reduced to a value called as IH that is holding current value. So, the first condition is to make the anode current to reduce to a value called as holding current. When anode to cathode current is reducing at the same time SER must be reversed by us till it is completely turned off. So, that is VAK must be reversed by us. So, this is the second condition. First condition, IAK should be reduced to a value lesser than the holding current. During that reducing time, the SCR should be in reverse bias condition. So, that is VAK must be reversed. So, when VAK is reversed, the care should be taken that this VAK must be less than dV by dt rating. Otherwise, it will make the SCR to trigger again. So, these are all the three conditions which is very important to make the SCR to turn off successfully. That is, all this above condition must be imposed till the SCR regain its forward blocking, forward blocking voltage capability. So, the commutation circuit which is required to turn off the SCR should do all these three conditions successfully. So, that is what we call it as that circuit which is capable of doing all these three conditions successfully is what we call it as commutation circuit. Now, the types of commutation. There are two different types of commutation basically. One is we call it as natural commutation, other one is we call it as forced commutation. Let us go into the understanding of difference between these two, natural and forced commutation circuits. So, natural versus forced commutation. In natural commutation, no external circuitry is needed, which means that additional components are not required if it is a natural commutation. Whereas in the first commutation, external commutating components are required or external circuitry is needed in the case of forced commutation circuits. In the case of natural commutation, it requires AC voltage at the input side of the power circuit, whereas forced commutation works on DC voltage at the input. In the case of natural commutation, no power loss takes place during the commutation because it happens naturally, no external components. Whereas in the case of forced commutation, power losses takes place during the commutation. In the case of natural commutation, SCR turns off due to the negative of the supply voltage. Since it is requiring AC voltage, AC voltage has both positive and negative. During the negative voltage of the input supply, SCR goes off naturally since it is supplied with AC voltage. But in the case of SCR, in the case of forced commutation, SCR has to be turned off due to its voltage and current. In the case of natural commutation, cost involved in this commutation circuit is nil because we are going, not going to add anything to it since it has a natural zero crossing because of the AC input voltage. Whereas in the case of a forced commutation, cost of the commutation circuit is 
significant. It depends on what type of commutation I am going to use. And this is mostly used, natural commutation is mostly used in controlled rectifiers, AC voltage regulators, etc. Whereas post commutation circuits are used in choppers, inverters, etc. Now let us go for understanding the natural commutation. Natural commutation. This other name of this commutation is line commutation or it is also called as class F commutation. This occurs only when the converter is fed from an AC source. Only when the input is an AC, we can use this natural commutation. The circuit will be something like this. This is a, a normal half wave controlled rectifier circuit. If you look at it is very similar to that of the half wave rectifier circuit where the diode is being replaced with a thyristor here. Let us understand how this natural commutation process or natural commutation circuit works. The input is considered as a sin omega t, Vm sin omega t where Vm is the peak voltage of the input supply where omega is the angular frequency. If I try to draw the waveform for this Vm sin omega t with respect to omega t then it will look something like this where the peak value is Vm. If you look at this AC voltage it has natural zero crossings at every cycle. So this is at pi degrees, pi radians it crosses naturally at zero and at 2 pi again it crosses naturally at zero again at 3 pi, 4 pi all that. So these are all the natural zero crossings of the AC voltage whereas in the case of DC it will not have any natural zero crossings. Now if you look at during the positive half cycle of my AC input voltage, this thyristor T1 is forward bias. During the negative half cycle of the input voltage, the thyristor T1 is reverse biased. Since thyristor is a semi-controlled device, I can turn on the thyristor at any instant between this 0 to pi because between this 0 to pi, this thyristor T1 is forward biased. Similarly, from 2 pi to 3 pi also, the thyristor T1 is forward bias. So, I can turn on by applying the gate pulse to this thyristor at any time between 0 to pi. Similarly, between 2 pi to 3 pi. I can apply the gate pulse at any instant between 2 pi to 3 pi and I can make the thyristor to turn on. Let us assume that I am going to apply the gate pulse to this thyristor T1 at some instant between 0 to pi and at some instant between 2 pi to 3 pi and that gate pulse between 0 to pi is somewhere at this instant. Till this instant, till this instant of time I am not applying the gate pulse. Similarly here also from 2 pi till this instant I am not going to apply any gate pulse. Once I apply the gate pulse at this instant the thyristor will turn on, will try to turn on. So once this is applied at this instant the thyristor will try to turn on. So the load voltage will be flowing into the Sorry, source voltage will be flowing into the load. Similarly, at this instant again I try to turn on. At this instant again the source voltage will try, try to flow into the load. So let us try to draw the load voltage. If I look at load voltage, at this instant the thyristor is turned on. So only this portion of the waveform from this green line, this portion of this waveform will appear across the load because Thyristor is turned on only at this instant. So, at this instant, from this instant onwards, this portion of the waveform will appear across the load, which is what I have drawn here. Similarly, at this portion, this portion of the waveform only will appear across the load, which is also being drawn here. So, this is the waveform which will appear across the load. This is the input voltage waveform, this red line. This uh, magenta line is the waveform which will appear across the loads. Now some of the important observations that the listener should understand is if you look at the gate pulse is applied only for very short duration. Meaning is the gate pulse has been removed at this point of time. So assuming that the input the load current the current which is passing through this thyristor has become more than the latching current at this point of time. So I removed the gate pulse. So even if I remove this at this point, since the anode to cathode current is more than the latching current, removing does not make the thyristor to go into off condition. Now to turn off the SCR, I have to see that the current which is flowing through this thyristor has to come to a value which is what we call it as the holding current. Then naturally the thyristor will turn off. 
so since it is an ac voltage the waveform shape of the current will also have natural zero crossing so the waveform will have something like this the magnitude of this i is dependent on the load load value so the current waveform also will have a very similar shape to that of the voltage waveform so automatically there is some some time at some time the current waveform will approach zero which means that the current passing through this iak has reached to a, to a value which is closer to zero so which means that the it has come to a value which is lower than that of the holding current so naturally at this point the thyristor will turn off so this method of turning off of the thyristor where we do not have any external circuitry involved to make this thyristor to turn off is what we call it as natural commutation now let us see what about the forced commutation circuits forced commutation circuit this forced commutation circuit is used when the only when the input supply is dc supply so since dc do not have any natural zero crossing we require some external circuitry in order to turn off the scr so the commutation circuit is connected across the scr which is something like this which is generally an lc circuit inductance and capacitance are involved in this circuit so the co commutation circuit is generally an lc circuit there are different types of forced commutation circuit let us see all this one by one one is the self commutation by resonating load which we call it as class a commutation or load commutation second one is axillary commutation current commutation circuit which is what we call it as class b or resonant pulse and third one is complementary commutation which is what we call it as class c commutation then axillary voltage commutation which is what we call it as class d or impulse commutation then external pulse commutation which is what we call it as class e commutation so we have five methods of commutation circuit based on how they are being commutated in this lecture just we will understand only the self commutation by resonating load let us go into that this is the circuit which we call it as self commutation or load commutation here you can see that lc component is put in series with the load resistance r for low values of r and c component is put in parallel with load resistance r if the value of r is too large so this this lc component is the commutating element and this lc component is the commutating element there is no much difference between these two only with the capacitance there is a difference now this circuit is not new to us this has been again discussed in our electric circuit theory course if you look at or if you assume that this side is a t as a switch then it is something like an rlc transient circuit with dc input dc rlc transient circuit so there are three uh, modes of operation in this dc rlc transient circuit one is the circuit can be underdamped and the circuit can be overdamped and the circuit can be undamped so there are uh, three methods of uh, making the circuit to operate so in that let us assume that this overall circuit must be an underdamped circuit overall circuit is an underdamped circuit underdamped circuit response will be something like what i am shown here so if you look at this uh, the, even though the current is a dc the there is uh, the dc current will not die out naturally to zero it will cross zero point and oscillate for some time and then it settles to zero so this point is where the current has become zero which is very similar to that of the case what we have discussed in our ac commutation or the natural commutation so current rises to a maximum value and then begins to fall and when current decays to zero and tends to reverse scr will turn on by itself at point a which is very similar to that of what we have seen in our ac commutation so very important to remember here is the overall circuit should be an underdamped circuit so that is the important condition to make the current waveform to go in this nature so that at point a the device will naturally turn off that's all about the commutation circuits here and now let us go for concluding the session in this video we have discussed what is the meaning of a commutation and its type there are generally two methods of commutation one is natural commutation and forced commutation also we have seen the difference between natural commutation and forced commutation natural commutation are used only when the input supply is ac supply 
forced commutation circuits are used only when the input supply is DC supply. In forced commutation circuit, there are five methods of forced commutation starting from class A to class E. And in this lecture, we have covered only class A for understanding purpose of the commutation. With this, let us close this session and in the next session, we will see about the serious and parallel operation of SER. Thank you for your patient listening. Thank you.